if there is one thing that I could say that all, like every single person in Web3 agrees on is we need to onboard more people from Web2. We have like the Silicon Valley dream. Like we want to build something that is really like it's 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 going to define a generation. There was one key thing that we noticed is that communication is broken. That's how we started getting into Hermes. Uh, so basically in Web3, people are anonymous. They have their wallets on their wallet addresses. Um, but then a, a key component to, to a good user experience is being notified about stuff that matters to you. Hello, all my friends. David here from Crypto Tutorials. And today I get to sit down with Sergio, one of the founders of Hermes Protocol. Hermes is a recent winner of the Radix grant program, and they are developing a whole suite of communication tools for Web3. Today, we're gonna to discuss the vision of Hermes, what work has been completed up until now, and their vision for the future, as well as the possibility of a Hermes token. I've been blessed to meet and speak with many Web3 developers, and I must say, Sergio is one of the most clear, honest, and genuinely likable leaders I have met. He truly has the goal of creating something amazing in the blockchain space, and this project is on its way. Sergio and I talked for well over an hour, but I've cut it down to the most important nuggets. If you appreciate that type of work, please show it by hitting the like and subscribe buttons, either now or when you reach the end of the interview. Okay, that covers the basics. But let's jump in as Sergio explains how he got involved in crypto and the birth of the Hermes protocol. I was thinking, okay, you know what? I need to, to start investing this money because banks are not going to cut it. <laughs> uh, so, you know, uh, using my Revolut account, I did uh, some investing in like Amazon, Tesla, Netflix, and all of those kinds of things. And e eventually... Uh, we did try this this crypto platform on the phone that had an app. They they uh, they offered like uh, between ten to thirteen uh, APR on on stable coins, which was you know very appealing. Um, but uh, what eventually what it clicked to me was wait a second. Crypto is all about decentralization, or at least in a big part, right? DeFi. But I'm using a centralized platform. If they are offering that yield, they must be getting it more somewhere else. So um, let's take a look, a harder look at DeFi. And I started looking around and I found Anchor Protocol. Anchor Protocol led to Terra, led to Luna, USD, all those things. So I went down the rabbit hole and I was convinced. I was like, damn, this really works. This this makes sense. So then I, I switched from, okay, I'm a curious person to I want to help. I want to make this successful. We were so convinced uh, about the Terra vision with USD, the decentralized stablecoin, um, that when we saw the opportunity to participate on a hackathon, we just signed up immediately. We, at the time, we weren't even sure uh, what we were going to build. Um, and from all of this experience, there was one key thing that we noticed is that communication is broken. That's how we started getting into Hermes. Uh, so basically, in Web3, people are anonymous. They have their wallets, their wallet addresses. Um, but then a, a key component to, to a good user experience is being notified about stuff that matters to you. Like, uh, you know, mm -hmm. when you on your Revolut account, when you receive a money from a friend, you get a notification that says you got paid. Um, when you forget your password on some account, you press the button and you get an email. Okay, here's how to reset your password. These kinds of things are lacking in Web3, what is the number one thing that everybody has been asking us to build? And uh, there was like a, a voice uh, that just said like, notifications you need notifications like nfts want to show when nfts are sold um, um dexes want to have price alerts uh people want to know when they get paid we wanted to know when we get paid because our projects were paying us in ust so we wanted to get a message when they paid us so that would make even sure. make sense for us we understood okay we need to build our platform in a way that we can send these notifications, but they need to go where people are. Instead of building a Discord bot or a Telegram bot or whatever, we needed to make it in a way kind of like decentralized uh, so that we can go wherever we want, we needed it to go. Um, so that's how the, the, vision, the, the first vision for Hermes Protocol was born. Uh, notifications on any of these three platforms. 
when we uh, fast forward a few months, um, when we joined the the, the Radix grants program, um, we realized okay, we we need to be laser focused on something that can drive us revenue um, in the short term because after the Luna crash, we were left with almost no runway, and yeah. the, the, that was very chaotic uh, for 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 us. Like um, I can't just, imagine. Just, I know from the outside what it felt like. I can't imagine what it was like to be knee deep in that platform and and watching that happen overnight like that and just suddenly go, yeah. Uh. Yeah, to, to, to give you like a, an, an idea, uh, we were so deep uh, in the ecosystem, like 90 something percent of my net worth, my entire net worth was either Luna or Terra altcoins. As on the day that we opened our office in Lisbon, uh, because, you know, with all this entire bull, we started hiring people because we needed to build this thing, right? Um, when we opened our office was the day that Luna crashed. Um, it was nice that we had the office where we could get everyone in like a war room scenario. And, and then I started like contacting all the founders uh, that I knew uh, to, to like get them in and starting to make decisions. Um and uh, but yeah, on the other hand, it's like okay, we're celebrating, but uh, it it doesn't feel right. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> God, um, That's, it'll yeah. it'll it'll end up being one of those just great, you know, when you finally get this up up and crank, it'll be a great story to always have in your back pocket because it's it's one of those you know, yeah. <laughs> one of those that every everybody in in crypto will be able to connect with it because that moment we all, I mean, everybody know remembers the moment when Terra crashed. It was just suddenly out of yep. nowhere and it it took everything with it. You have it hard coded in your memory. Yeah. It's, like, it's not gonna yeah. disappear. Uh, you know, I mean, if if you've been around the last couple of years ftx and terra moments uh, you, there's no losing those two they're they're, they're there for good yeah. with ftx i i already went from kind of a whale to a shrimp but what i didn't realize is how big ftx was and why that in indirectly mattered to us as well so like we were actively applying to grants on other ecosystems to bring our project to those ecosystems as well um, like our grand vision with, with Hermes is always to like expand, not necessarily migrate. So we're not the kind of project that goes into a place and then goes to another one. We, we just keep expanding because it, ha it, it ties in with what we want to build. We want to be everywhere, basically. So, mm -hmm. But I didn't realize how, big, how important it was. Uh, only like a few days later, when I started following up with these layer ones and they're like, uh, hey guys, no any updates, uh, etc. And they were like, "Oh, you know, with the FTX collapse, this actually had a big impact on us, so uh, we need to pause the grants program and blah blah blah." And we're like, "Shit, really? Yeah. I mean, you already told us you would give us money, you know?" <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that that really wasn't a, a nice experience, and that's when we we realized, okay, we seriously need to uh, think about what the fuck are we going to do now? So what we're focusing on right now, which is going to tie in with our consensus goal, um, which is something we've uh, defined as being part of this acceleration program with RDX Works, um, is to push a new feature that's going to be about uh, um, newsletters, change logs, and that kind of like communication. So we've already built the web three to web two bridge where we allow blockchain events or ledger events uh to to go to uh to the web two social places uh discord and etc mm -hmm. um but you know what we're building is really cool also for businesses to be able to communicate with uh the users which that so far are anonymous i mean sure you can send a message to someone on telegram but do you know which wallet they have unless they tell you um if you if you know a whale on the ledger records because they're interacting with your decks or your marketplace how can you reach out to that person maybe they don't even want to be reached out and that's fine but i mean if they want to there should be a way to be able to communicate so that's what we figured out and we realized okay you know what let's let's take this a step further and allow businesses to communicate with users uh, when they've opted in for those communications. 
we have two uh, two different communication uh, steps here. There's the broadcasts, which kind of like newsletters and change logs, new partnerships, and so on. And then there, there's going to be like a transactional thing. So transactional is known in the email uh, industry as being one to one. So that's the kind of uh, infrastructure that we're building right now, and it is expected to go live within, well, by the end of this month for sure. Oh, wow. um, so by consensus. Okay. Uh, we will already have this available and we're looking forward to having already a few dozen clients so that we can, you know, showcase these things at the event. Now, um, now when you're saying that it's not going into the Web2 world, just to be clear, the, where is this, like, where are these broadcasts then showing up? They're showing up directly in the wallet or they're showing up, how, how is the user actually receiving that data? And until we have uh, the systems in place to uh, send these notifications to the wallets, then for now, the present 3rd of March, uh, people get it on um, direct messages through our bots, either on Discord or Telegram. Okay. Um, but we on Radix, uh, we already have... Um, a very exciting partnership with one of the wallets. I'm not sure if uh, I can uh, already say which one it is, but uh, <laughs> they are they're, they're very excited to working with us, and uh, they they have confirmed that they will support our notifications by consensus. Um, so people will be able to pick if they want to get a certain notification on their wallet uh, or another one on Discord, etc. So this is very key important to us like people need to be able to choose i want this on discord i want this on telegram i want this on my wallet everything that we notify them they will always have like these buttons that says pause or unsubscribe or something like that so uh, you never get that feeling that i'm being spammed yeah, if you yeah. do just push the button and you're out immediately no why did you unsubscribe no nothing just <laughs> click and you're out <laughs> right <laughs> definitely the one that experience um we want people to be in absolute control because they they need to trust us and that's something that we're going to take very seriously is the the trust because we're talking about people's privacy here as well right so mm -hmm. if we are allowing businesses to talk with anonymous users um and you know if they're able to um you know if they ask them to like hey fill out this form for us, like we want to get some feedback, then the, that might uh, break their anonymity, right? So sure. um, we, we want to make sure that, that people really know what they're doing. Uh, so this is like very, very important for us. Um, yeah. If, if there is one thing that I could say that all, like every single person in Web3 agrees on is we need to onboard more people from Web2. Like, you can have this, uh, you know, CEO of Binance, uh, the CTO of blah, blah, blah. They, they can all disagree on a lot of things. But if there's one thing that everybody agrees is this, everybody agrees, right? So the user experience needs to be even better or at least similar than what we have in Web2. If it's not, people are not going to bother. So what, you know, as far as, I mean, I know you guys are, you're on, obviously you're on Terra, um, and I think I read that you were on Near as well, or, or you, and then Radix. What is it that you can do? You know, because a lot of people that, that are following me are, are Radix fans. What what mm -hmm. what are you going to be able to do differently on Radix? Maybe because you know it's got things like personas and it's got um, some of these different features from a lot of the other layer one blockchains. Do you have any ideas where you can expand differently into Radix? Yeah, so, um, th th like, I think we haven't fully tapped into that potential um, because right now we're more focused on enabling on Radix what we already support on the other ecosystem. So we want to basically bring Radix up to speed. And mm -hmm. uh, once uh, we've achieved that, then we can see, okay, what is Radix specific um, that we can maybe take advantage of that we can't do on other places. But uh, definitely the personas are something that is quite interesting uh, that we don't really see on other ecosystems. There are still some things that I don't know how we're going <laughs> to tackle at some point. Uh, but at least I know that first... We did get accepted into a grants program. It is an acceleration program. I mean, we have direct contact with the C-level uh, folks at, at Radix. I mean, I every every week we talk with peers, with Adam. Uh, just this week, we had a masterclass with Matt about uh, product development. I mean, these things are insanely valuable. Uh, and um, 
this makes it very much worth it for us to 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 focus on on radix and you know re- basically pay back what they're they're paying us in uh um in all of the, this value basically um so in terms of things that could be um maybe a bit more different uh like we've um i don't know if this is like super specific to radix but for example like the how fast it is is definitely going to be something really cool for our um, experience because we've built our entire platform to work in real time Mm -hmm. which is very different than the typical notification bots that you get on other platforms, which basically uh, every minute or every five minutes, they query the ledger to see if something has been updated and then they send a message. This is like the typical way of doing it because it's so much easier to develop. Actually, going through an events-driven oriented architecture it just adds a ton of complexity um, and it's not easy, but you do get real time notifications. Like literally the same second that it is finalized wow. on Ledger, you're getting the message on Discord. Being able to showcase how fast and how scalable our platform is will definitely make a big impact. But, you know, <laughs> on Terra, there's like, uh, you have. Maybe sometimes like you have five to 10 blocks, like full minutes where there isn't a single transaction. From a user perspective, you don't get almost any volume like um, transactions or, or trading or whatever. Yeah. Um, like it, it's it's like a, a ghost town. So uh, how can we showcase to people that we have this amazing platform when there's no transactions yeah, no, happening? It's, it's interesting. It's, just, it's You know, we talk about FTX and that it's it's. A very similar thing happened there. I I early on got involved uh, with a lot of Solana projects, and I was involved with mm-hmm. quite a few that were on there, and and you know got in early and was an early investor in a number of them. And even so, I've watched multiple of them move to Polygon and other places because when the token price crashed, the user base just vanished. Yeah, when that token crashes. It, it just sucks the life out of a platform. And that's actually one of the things that I love with, with Radix is they seem like they're building at a much slower speed, which which means that the token isn't going up as fast, which means it doesn't have the volume yeah. of all these other things. But hopefully that means that you're getting a more, you know, stable as opposed to the, you stable. Know, the, yeah. the yep. pyramid style of building. Mm-hmm. So. Um, yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Uh, that's something that I've I've been uh, I've been seeing and I've been feeling as well with um, with the Radix leadership is like we need to get the the foundation working and it's not gonna it's not gonna be worth the market that we're the best at this and that if we are not yet already the best so like the tech is there but what you have now the main nets that you have now is specific even even olympia it doesn't have smart contracts right yeah. so how do you are guys- you really gonna spend millions uh on on marketing to then get the people in and be like oh radix feels a lot very awesome let let let, 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 let me build my platform here and you know you'll be like oh there's no smart contracts yet. Okay, so what do I do now? Oh, you have to go to beta net, which is like the test net. Okay, but then when is it going to be live? Q2. Okay, well, you know, that's not so far away. But then this unlimited scalability that you talk about and you pitch that no other layer one has, when is that going to come? Oh, 2024. Right. Quite there. I know you were talking about tokens and from what I've read, you guys are going to be releasing a token sometime down the road. Is that, that for Hermes? Is that right? At some point, so um, actually, I'm, I'm glad you touched the topic because I do have like a ton of people asking me this, um, and you know, at least now it's on record. I can just send them the video <laughs> later. Um, so, as a way to try and incentivize people to delegate to 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 our validator, we told everyone, okay, we're gonna have a commission because we need this. The we need this right now, but w- uh, whenever we have product market fit and we're sustainable and so on, we will airdrop um, to people uh, at least the amount they have that, that they have been paying us in the commission. But we didn't necessarily specify it was the Hermes token. It was an airdrop. It can be in a, in a stable coin, for example, okay. or some other thing. Um, we, what we did realize early on is launching a token is not something you should take on lightly. We have like the Silicon Valley dream. Like we want to build something that is really 
like it's 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 going to define a generation like microsoft apple uh amazon did google did right and and basically um at the beginning we figured okay we don't have the expertise we don't know what we're going to do with the token let's not do a token as as things went on and we started thinking more as a business not as a free service we we figured okay you know actually if we already have these things that we're going to charge then maybe um you know they can get the discount if they pay with our token and that gives some that that does some buy pressure and if we have some people staking which there's like token locking and then we can do like some some distribution but then you become a security which is like murky waters <laughs> so there's like there's so many yeah. intric- intricacies. It's so complicated. So basically what I've been telling, like the TLDR of all this is there might be a token at some point if we really think that it makes sense, if we can really like dr- make it in a way that makes sense long-term wise. If not, we will still do the airdrop. We will honor what we've been saying, uh, but it'll probably in- in- be in some other token. Um and basically, that's about it. Like, we need to achieve product market fit. We need to become the de facto communications program or blah, blah, whatever you, you say. Um, and once we get that hardcore adoption, once we become, once we have all of these fans reaching out and be like, hey, I really love you guys. You've saved me money and blah, blah, blah. And we start, uh, you know, charging businesses, charging users. And we, and, you know, charging might be feel negative, but if we're giving them value and they're willing to pay for it, that's a good thing. Uh, so if we do have these things proven, then that might be a good time to launch a token because then people really realize this is really useful. If they're doing a token. One of the interesting things you were talking about a minute ago, and I, I kind of wanted to touch back with it. I know you've obviously had you know, experience with a number of different grant programs. Um, and you were touching on kind of how Radix is as everything they do, radically different. Um, but kind of, I'd love to hear a little bit more about, you know, your experience specifically with the Radix grant program, because, you know, I know a lot of people listening are going to be interested in Radix or maybe thinking of starting. Um, so I'd love mm-hmm. to just hear a little more on on that. If you have, like, if you have an idea of something you want to build, even if it's just an idea, um, you're literally not going to be wasting anything by applying to the grants program. You know, you may not even realize that you're sitting on a gold mine, or maybe you think you have a gold mine when it's actually worthless. And this mm-hmm. is the really good feedback that you're going to get on that interview. You're going to have to prepare really well to to pitch your idea to, to the Radix team. And if they see the vision, if you sell them on what you want to build, then they will take you on. Uh, if it's really not that much worth it, or if you're just building the same thing that someone else is doing or whatever, then, you know, they're going to be a friend about it and tell you like, hey, um, you know, maybe you'll be the first one on Radix, but it's not really innovative in the crypto space. It's been a really good experience. Uh, that's also something that uh, that I can add. Um, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, the proximity we have with peers, Matthew, Adam, um, uh, May, the, the head of ecosystem. It's just they they are helping us with things that range so many different topics from, from product design to user testing to tokenomics, legal, compliance, security, uh, not just cybersecurity, physical security. Uh, I mean, there's there's so many different things that I would even love to talk about it, but I can't because I'm an <laughs> NDA. But uh, just, you know, so broad topics, I think it's fine. Um and uh, like it's 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 been really really helpful and really thankful. Um, yeah, very cool, very, very cool. Let me uh, I'm gonna peek over and see if I missed anything. I was um, oh I was gonna ask you know just as a general for the for people that are out in the community, what can they be doing to help both both you guys and maybe any of the other grant programs? You know the, because you're obviously connected with all of them. What can the community be doing to help support and help grow these? Because I know we have a you know. Radix has this very excited, very interested community in the Radix platform, um, but I don't know that there's a lot of you know a lot of people don't know what to do to help build and grow towards the future of Radix that we all see. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I, I would say that like using the platforms like that's okay. I mean, it's always beneficial, I guess, um, to get, you know, more users. It's a, it's a good metric to see the number of active people you have in your project and so on. But, um, 
you know, just using or just using in testing, it's not, I mean, again, it's good for a vanity metric, but it's not that useful uh, for the businesses themselves. Like if you really want to help, uh, let's say, OC Swap improving their DEX or Hermes Protocol improving our notifications, just literally give feedback. Like, okay. um, you know, when, when you get a notification of our platform, for example, because you want you wanted to know when XRD reaches a certain price, for example, literally just come to us and say like, hey, um, this, this thing, it's not really clear. Uh, like maybe you can change the wording or the colors or whatever. Like give feedback, S- specify what you don't like. Um, and then let the, the, the teams uh, iterate and build upon it. Um, and also, if you want to get involved, even if you're not a developer, that's absolutely fine. We need business developers. We need marketers or marketeers. Uh, we need um, in Web3, community is an essential part to a brand. In Web2, you can have a brand, but it you know it's far away in the YouTube channel or in the Facebook page and people follow, but you know, you post a comment, but you only get other people commenting on it. So you never get that distant intention from them. In Web3, it's completely different. Uh, like you you need a community, a tight-knit community that, that gives you the feedback, that talks with you, that, you know, it vents with you because they're frustrated about something. And moderators are always needed in these things. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you're if you suck at everything, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, if you at least have the human skills to talk with people and be empathic, then, you know, maybe, and, and especially if you enjoy helping people, I think this is like the number key thing. You may suck at Telegram and Discord, and you may not know anything about how it works, but if you like helping people, if you feel that joy of, I made someone's day. I guess I know you said you got an NDA. Any any um anything unreleased? Mm-hmm. Just always looking for that fun alpha nugget that everybody's. Ooh, I never knew that. I didn't know that was coming out. You know, it's it's always fun if there well, is one. Well, uh, an alpha that maybe has not been very obvious, or or a couple of them is first, um, all of these projects that are on the grants program have a very well defined goal to achieve at consensus. So by the end of April, these six companies are going to work their asses off to be the best at something. Like mm-hmm. each of us has a core metric that they have to um, they have to work upon um, and um, you know to each their own. They, uh, each of us has their own um, metric, but they are going to do whatever it takes to to get there and even you know pass and, and, and overachieve essentially. We're definitely doing stuff now that may may not make that much sense because it's like work that we have to do pre Babylon um, that will change when Babylon comes. But it's gonna it's all about that user experience um, and basically. Uh, that ch- that touches into the 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 other second thing. So, on our case with Hermes Protocol, what we are building right now uh, the, to 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 push out by the end of this month is the the newsletters and the transactional that I've mentioned earlier. And where this ties in really well, and it's going to be really interesting to see, is uh, projects uh, any project really being able to notify any person. Um, on, on Radix. So even if it's a project that we don't natively support, like we don't know how their smart contracts work, we don't know what accounts they have or whatever, they can still have a contact list that people subscribe to to get alerted about something. And then they tell us like, hey, Hermes, this user is subscribed. Can you please tell them about this? Of course, this is not how it works. It's all with APIs. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> let me get down. That. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, like, can you please send this letter? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we route it forward. So either Discord or uh, to one of the partnered wallets, um, it's going to get that. So um, not only that, um, not only is this going to enable any project that uses our services to notify people about what they care about, but this is going to also feel very cohesive in the sense that you can subscribe to these things on the project's um, websites. 
So you don't have to actively sign up on our website and go through, you know, press the plus button, choose uh, which chain, choose which project, and all of those different steps. No, you don't have to do any of that. You literally, for example, go on XRD domains and you want to know um, when a certain domain expires so you can try and snipe it, for example. I mean, I know that's like a, a, in a year from now, but, yeah, but so maybe not the best example, but whatever. No, um, it makes you, sense. You, you, yeah, so like the experience will be like you, you just push a button, you sign a message with your wallet, et voila, it's done. Uh, like you literally just did that through that website and you never had to interact like specifically through us, say. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Um, it's, it's, it's integrated into their into their sites and into their protocols, but they have exactly. that, you know, like like you do that. I, how often do you use a Slack messaging bot when you're on, you know, Kajabi's exactly. page because that's who they use to communicate their their messaging system. Through. Yeah, so that's that same. Actually, kind of- something I'm I'm actually quite a, quite uh, eager to to see projects doing is um, having that uh, like the landing page and like usually at the end you have like oh uh, subscribe to 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 whatever so that you know when we go live for example mm-hmm. like it's it's so typical right uh, we 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 want to be able to see that but instead of like entering your email address just pushing a button it connects to your wallet et voila that's done so when the platform is live you just get a push notification from Hermes either on the wallet or again on Discord or whatever it is and you just know about it. Yeah. Um, so you know uh, yeah, that's the, the way I mean, that, that respects people's privacy. That's always been the dream with with Web3 is, and that's why I love the um, exactly. the uh, personas in that so much because the idea of not having to constantly stick my email address in everybody's and, yeah. and, and fill out my name and give them my address and all of that just being able to say hey this is my Web3 identity send the information there. Well, there you have it, a great overview of the Hermes protocol right now and what's to come. If you made it this far, then please click that like and subscribe button so that I can share more great Web3 content with you. And in case you're not familiar with any of the other Radix grant winners, you really should find out about them. Click up here to discover the six amazing projects that have all won this grant.